All right, Mike Heck here for MMAfighting.com at Mohegan Sun, the site of Bellator 260. And you all know this, man. Look at him. Look at him. The captain himself, Eric Albaracine. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Uh, I'm excited to be here at Bellator 260 here at Mohegan Sun. It's like you're here every weekend. Cornering everybody. Who are you cornering this weekend? <laughs> hey, we got the number one team in the world, the Pitbull Brothers. So we, uh, we have the return of Ilaria Stark. Uh, she's fighting a legend in Vanessa Porto, a girl who's fought everybody in women's MMA from Cyborg to Nunez to Carmouche and Jennifer Maya. So uh, it's a big test for her. I'm really excited for another uh, great performance from Ilaria Stark. So you came straight here from Miami, Florida, because you were at the big fight on Sunday, Logan Mayweather, or Logan Paul versus Floyd Mayweather. See, all this is coming all together. Floyd Mayweather versus Logan Paul. It was fun. It was an exhibition bout. It was kind of, it went the way I expected it to go. But in the end, it was a lot of fun if you didn't take it that seriously. So you were there. What was the experience like for you? Well, I can tell you the Paul brothers took it very seriously. Um, and... We definitely, uh, we're cheering from the Pitbull Brothers. You know, I call for the mega powers of the Pitbull Brothers and the Paul Brothers to unite. And I wasn't sure if I was going to go to the event I was, because I had this event to come to. But then I saw AJ McKee doing an interview at the event, and I switched my flight and said, heck no, I'm going to Miami. I went to Miami. Uh, we ended up getting tickets, and uh, we witnessed, uh, in my opinion, we witnessed history. One is the... Uh, probably the last fight ever of Floyd Mayweather um, and Logan Paul. You know, you know, uh, I called for the upset of the century and winning, winning or losing. I, I, I'm not praising Logan Paul for not winning or losing, but for the mindset the he he's 26 years old. What were you doing at 26 years old? He just fought the greatest pound for pound boxer undefeated in history. And uh, he created reality. Everybody said it wasn't possible and, and he did it. So that's something to be, to be praised for. And the Pitbull brothers, you know, uh, we're all behind the, the Paul brothers. Everybody hates on them, but now that we're in the Showtime family together, uh, we're uniting again. And Hell, we were at his fight, so we're going to invite him to Patrice Hill's fight against A.J. McKee. Uh, matter of fact, while I was there, A.J. McKee came up behind me while I was doing an Instagram Live, and he uh, video bombed me. And, uh, man, he had talking some nonsense about he's 17 and 0, and I had a response for, for, for him that Matricio sent me a message, and it was great on my, uh, on my Instagram uh, reel or what is it called? Reel or? Story? No, IGTV. On the IGTV, so he came up to me, and uh, it was great. It was good because that's why I went there for for that uh, to make sure that the Pitbull brothers were represented there at the uh, Mayweather Paul fight. Are we close to this fight being announced? I mean, do do you know anything about it? I think we are. I think they're waiting for it to be a live event with for a sold out event with fans, and it's going to be soon. I'm thinking within the next. Eight weeks, maybe the end of July and August, um, and I think it's going to be one of the greatest cards. Uh, they're waiting for it to go live with a full arena because it's going to be one of the greatest Bellator cards in history. The pound for pound best, Patricia Pitbull versus the young lion, the mercenary who's murked his way through this tournament. And uh, I would love to see, um, I would love to see that that battle happen on. In a full arena, I don't know where. Um, I'd love to see Patricky versus Peter Quilly, that rematch. The Pitbull Brothers versus SBG, that continue. Uh, Leandro Ego, versus, let's get him for a title shot. If we can't get that title shot, let's get him against another SBG guy and James Gallagher. So I'm really excited. I think that that's going to be for a million dollars. And, um, man, the event, as far as uh, the event is what you're talking asked was um was completely different than any MMA or boxing event I've ever been to. Uh it was like uh a really social if you were social media and famous, everybody knew who you were. And if you weren't, it, it was kind of weird. Like I had there was a seven year old we actually got to sit next to Logan Paul's parents where they were where they were seated. Uh it was raining. 
So, uh, you know, Showtime gave us tickets um, on the floor. And as it started raining, people started leaving. So we started moving up rows. And by the end, the rain, a lot of people had left. We were sitting right front row uh, in, the, in the best seats in the house. So um, we met some really big TikTokers there. I even think I found another fighter, uh, a guy named Harry Tate. He's got like 5 million followers on TikTok out of Australia. And he, he, he said he wants to be on the next uh, Paul... Um, Woodley card, and, and uh, we went to Logan Paul's after party, and he came straight up to him and said, hey, you're funny, to Harry Tate. And actually, he's not only funny, he's real athletic, and uh, he wants to start training. So I think I, w I might start getting in that little niche of uh, cross-combat cross -combat fighters. Man, so Pitbull Brothers and Fight Ready, we're just going to start a, a new little niche, a new little trend, start bringing in these guys and, and molding them, getting ready for these big fights. Yeah, I mean, it seems to be working. Everybody is, these YouTubers are making a lot of money. I mean, it's only, he did the impossible. Not only is Logan Paul only in his third fight in, in boxing, he's already making $20 million, making more than any other fighter out there. You know, it's amazing what he's doing. I'm a big fan. Yeah, I'm in the wrong business for sure. So there's so much to talk to you about. First of all, it's Israel Adesanya is getting ready to defend his middleweight title once again. He's going to be taking on Marvin Vittori. He had some not so kind things to say about Paulo Costa. We found out that he's, I don't know if if, if, if withdrawing from the fight is the, is accurate because he said he didn't never really sign the contract for the fight with Jared Cannonier. But Israel Adesanya said that he pulled out of the fight because he's having Adesanya's baby. I wanted to get your reaction to to those comments from the middleweight champion. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad you brought that up. UFC two, UFC two sixty three is this weekend, and since everybody and their mama is sh is showing up in Florida, I'm flying in and I'm bringing Paulo Costa and Izzy's baby. You know how all the how all the fans are gonna know it's Izzy's baby because he's clueless on the ground. That 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 was that was a pretty wild comment. So. On top of that, Paul Costa continues to be in the news. UFC president Dana White had some things to say about Costa. Uh, he said that, you know what, if he was a 13-year-old YouTube star, he might have more money because obviously Paul has been talking about the pay structure. I think that's a very popular topic here in, in mixed martial arts. So what, what did you make of Dana White's comments after this whole thing in, in his various interviews with different media members? Um, um, you know, uh, Dana White, thanks, Dana. Uh, duly noted, it might be time to change Paulo's nickname from the Eraser to Logan Paulo Costa. You know he he does have a he does have a YouTube channel, uh, Paulo Costa Bohashina, and it, you know there's a video on there. I think that's got over 6.1 million views. So he's given us the formula, and and we're gonna take it. And uh, Paulo might be front row sitting there at UFC 263. Really? Is he gonna be there? Stay tuned. Tune in to <laughs> tune in, get the pay per view, and you'll see. All right. What's uh What's Triple C been up to? I know a lot of people ask about Henry Cejudo. He's uh obviously the retired on top, which a lot of people don't do. But he seems to be planting these seeds about maybe getting back, maybe getting into boxing. He's he's thrown a lot Ooh. of big names out. What, what's going on with Henry Cejudo? Oh, the king of cringe. The king of cringe is uh. Is gonna have a queen of cringe and a baby of cringe soon, so that's big news. Um, I'm, I'm uh, excited for him and uh, in this new chapter of his life. But you know what? Triple C, Triple C, still got that, still got enough in him. And I think um, there was a there was a boxer who's also a social media star that was at the Logan Paul fight. A huge boxing name by the name of Ryan Garcia. And don't be surprised if uh, I tried to get a hold of him. I was on the other side of the arena. He was sitting front row on the other side. We were trying to get a hold of him with to know uh, we didn't get a hold of him. But I think that there's a possibility there, a huge fight. Who knows? Maybe it's on that August 28th fight with Woodley and, uh, and um, Jake Paul. Anything is possible, like we said. We're not here to bend reality. We're here to create reality. And uh, it's not the first time Henry's called out a boxer. He's called out Vasily Lomachenko before. Um, Lomachenko didn't take the bait. I don't think he was ready 
for an MMA fight. We've called him in for MMA. He comes from, I think he's done Samba before. He's done some wrestling. So, uh, but Vasily Lomachenko didn't want any of Triple C. So far, the only boxer who had enough uh, courage that came across is Clarissa Shields, two-time Olympic gold medalist, and she'll be actually competing in the PFE, PFL this week. I'm excited to see that. But so far, we haven't had any boxers have the courage to come to MMA yet. How do you think she's going to do? I think a lot of people have, there's a lot of potential there. They feel like her ceiling's very high, but this is her first fight. It's a whole different thing when you're inside a cage competing, but I feel like her attitude is, has always been correct. She's been very realistic about everything. How do you think she's going to fare against Brittany Elkin? I think that um, it's, uh, depends how these matchmakers do it. You got to carry, sometimes you got to pick the right fights for a person like that. You know, she's probably going to be one of the faces for women's MMA, especially for the PFL. And, I mean, don't set her up with a grappler right off the bat, I would assume. So I think she's going to do great. A two-time Olympic gold medalist, never doubt an Olympic gold medalist, I can tell you that. You mentioned Leandro Ego. He's coming off the big win against Darian Caldwell a couple weeks ago. Huge win. Got that one back because I know how much he really wanted that one after their first fight. He gets the win. On to bigger and better things. He's sticking around here. I'm actually looking at him right now. It, he didn't go home. He stuck around. Why is that? Leandro Ego. You know, uh, Leandro Ego is always looking for the edge. Um, you know, he wants that Pettis fight. So he stayed here uh, to help out uh, the Korean Zombie. The Korean Zombie is preparing for Dan Ige, who's uh, fighting on June 19th in about two weeks. Um, and that's going to be a title eliminator fight. And I can tell you that... Uh, when you fight the zombie, a zombie apocalypse of 2021, your only mission is to survive, especially when he's training with EddieChad.com right now. So look for big things, and uh, it, uh, it's going to happen. We're looking for that title shot this year. Different names coming in and, and training with you guys, one of which Eric Anders, who's getting ready to fight Darren Stewart in their rematch this Saturday at UFC 263. How have you enjoyed having the former University of Alabama Football star, former national champ, coming in and giving, getting some work with you guys. Man, Eric Anders. I love working with Eric Anders. The guy learns fast. Um, I think that uh, you're going to see a new and improved Eric Anders, even from the one that was just three weeks ago. You know, uh, I let him know that his pr pride is dead, but this time you might see uh, you, you might see your boy make the death dentist count from 10 to 1 backwards. I heard a rumbling. I want to see if you can confirm this for me. Marco Matson? Is Marco Matson with you guys now? Mark the Olympian Madsen. Man, I can tell you that uh, he's been training with us uh, for a couple weeks now. He's in preparation for a huge fight against uh, one of the toughest grizzled veterans in the UFC and Clay Guida, a guy that's beat. Pettis, a guy that's beaten Nate Diaz, who's fighting this D this weekend, a guy that's beaten Rafael Dos Anjos. You know, he's beaten some of the, the best guy, to, guy out there. And um, I would say that uh, in this fight for the Carpenter, I'm going to also change his, his nickname from the Olympian to Blood Axe. Uh, and now that uh, he's um, – the Carpenter is uh, – always been a fan of wrestling and actually i saw him at the Olympic trans at the Olympic trials i'm a fan of his uh anybody that's a fan of wrestling i'm a fan of so i just he's he called out this guy because he is a wrestler and i just wanted to know it uh this is not a drill and then uh, now that uh he's training with eddiechild.com he's learning how to nail people in the face and he hits like a two by four so uh we tried to come up with a play on words for the carpenter that would work. And uh, I think I nailed it. I hope you saw that. <laughs> what does Marco Madsen's edition do? Like, wh where does that put fight ready in terms of wrestling? Like, uh, as a wrestling team, like how do, where does that rank them compared to, you know, AKA and some of these other gyms that, that have these highly touted pedigrees? Well, I think that makes Fight Ready the number one wrestling gym in the world now. I mean, we're the only gym that has an Olympic gold medalist and Olympic silver medalist with Triple C and Mark Blood Axe, the Olympian Manson. So I think um, Khabib's retired over at AKA and DC recently retired. So 
I think we now, the Fight Ready, takes over AKA as a number one wrestling gym in the world. And uh, when you combine the Pitbull brothers and Fight Ready with the, the four titles that we have, the double champ with uh, Patrice Hill, the double champ with Henry Cejudo at Fight Ready, the Pitbull brothers and Fight Ready together, uh, I think we're the number one team in the world. So I think um, stay tuned. We got big things coming up. Last thing, I mean, I'd be remiss if we didn't ask you about the ensemble here because, I mean, th this is unbelievable. From the shoes to the to the shades, man. Like, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I'm a shout out to the king of bling. I'm a big fan of Philip Klein. So, there you go. All the best to you and the team this week this weekend, and you know, maybe we'll see you on Saturday. Maybe we'll see you on Saturday, front row. Maybe Paul Costa will be there. A lot of questions Definitely. still a little bit unanswered, but uh, hopefully we get some answers soon. And how, seriously, so Hudo Garcia, do you really think we're going to see that? Like in the next year, is that fight at least on the books? Believe it, believe it. We're creating reality over here. Fair enough. Eric, thank you for the time, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it.